I don't know. Do I want to drink my coffee out of this one? Or this one's kind of cute. Or oh, the cute quote on this one. I don't know. Help me pick. Hey guys, it's Boki here with Gigi's Fabric Shop, home to Juki Junkies and Janome Junkies. And today's video is our Make It Monday for these adorable little mug coasters. And these is, this is such a fun project, you guys. I'm gonna show you from start to finish how to create these, where to get the pattern, everything you need to make these for yourself. So I created this pattern with the full intent of being creative. I know this project is really simple and you're probably like, oh, it's so silly. Do I want to make something like that? I think this is the perfect project for just sparking uh, your creativity, letting your mind wander. I'm gonna teach you four different techniques by the end of this video. And these are just so fun for gifting. So what you can expect throughout this video is we're gonna go over where to find the pattern. That's super important. I'm gonna show you how to prepare uh, all these four different techniques because each of them use something a little different. So I'm gonna go over all of the techniques for you so you can decide which one you would like to do. So all the prep, all the cutting, and then of course the assembly, which is super simple on these by the end of this this video you're gonna have so many coasters that you're gonna make for everyone including yourself so let's dive into where you can get the pattern so where can you find this pattern this pattern is not a free pattern but it's super super affordable um, and it's also let me see how many pages I wrote here I wrote seven pages of uh, creative words for you guys uh, so it's really really helpful having the visual is going to be nice but the pattern is going to be located in the description down below so that's going to be the fastest way to find it it'll take you right over to jukijunkies.com the pattern is called afternoon tea but if you just type in coasters it should pop right up once you get the pattern, you're gonna get three uh, downloadable PDFs. So remember, this is not a physical pattern. These are PDF patterns. So uh, you can expect three things sent to your email so that way you can print them out. The first thing is gonna be the actual written out instructions. That's where the charts are, where all the information is, those seven pages of creative juice there. And then the other two are gonna be the actual templates that you're gonna cut out that I'll show you guys how to use these. Once you have the pattern all printed out, uh, it'll go over the supplies with you. This is a very, very scrap friendly project. We're talking fat quarter friendly, fat eighths, layered cake pieces, and various scraps. So I'll kind of walk you through each one so then you kind of know what you need, but this is a very scrap friendly project. All right, so let's take a little bit of a closer look at these templates and the techniques that I'll kind of be going over with you guys today. So these are your four templates. This one right here that kind of goes up at an angle makes this kind of sophisticated square one. This one that's rounded makes this cute cauldron or more like a rounded bottom type, more like a teacup. This one's fun. This one reminded me of some teacups I had growing up with my parents. Um, really cute kind of tapers out. And then I like this one. This one's like more cauldron style. Super, super cute. So those are your four templates that you have. Get creative here. You can make all the same matching sets or you can do them all different, whichever one calls your name. Let's go over the techniques that I'll be showing you guys here today. Um, I loved using the selvage for this project. And if you never use the selvage, um, this is gonna be a perfect fun way to kind of get introduced to that so you can incorporate it into your projects. I'll never pass up an opportunity to use selvage. Um, I think there's so many cute ones out there, especially from Ruby Star Society. If you don't know what I'm talking about or what is a selvage bokey, a selvage is the part of the fabric at the bottom of, of your yardage when you buy it. So like when you get a piece of fabric, it's usually folded in the bottom, usually has like swatches or the name of the collection. Some brands do really, really cute selvages like this one. Uh, nature gives to every time and season some beauty of its own, which was just perfect. Like, how could I throw that away? I can't, I just couldn't. So I'm gonna show you how to incorporate selvage into the design. I'm gonna show you how to do some um, applique work. I did some free motion quilting on this little guy as well. So I'm going to show you that. And then I did a little bit of piecing here with some scraps. And I also used the selvage for the handle, which I'll show you how to do that as well. And then um, this one I just did some embroidery for. So this one will be fun. I'll kind of go over vaguely what I would recommend if you go the embroidery route. Um, so we're going to dive into these and I'm going to show you guys how to make them from start to finish. So let's go. Okay, so I want to go over the stabilizer that I'm going to be using for these coasters just so that way you guys can follow along at home. Um, I'm going to be using fusible fleece as my stabilizer to give these a little bit of weight. I just used one layer um, and I found that that was good. If you want a little bit more stiffer look, you can maybe do SF-101 and fusible fleece. But I'm really content with how these feel. I think they're just kind of perfect for coasters, not too stiff, um, but you can change that accordingly. 
I'm also going to be using some Steema Seam 2 Light. This is what I used for the applique pieces to help tack it down. You've seen me use this before in previous Make It Mondays, especially um, on the little bunny pouch that we did and the heart pouch that we did. I used this for the little accents that we added to the pouch. So. If you've been following along to our Make It Monday sew alongs, this is definitely something you've seen before, but I'll be using it for the little uh, applique right here. As far as my supply list goes here, like I mentioned in, earlier in this video, this is very, very scrap friendly. So from fat quarters, fat eighths, uh, leftovers from your layered cakes, even five by fives, um, and just various scraps. I have some like yardage here um, from some Ruby Star collections that I really, really love. I love how vibrant their fabrics are and they always have the most precious selvages. So I'm using some Ruby Star Society fabric here today. Um, you kind of want to find, if you want to do the applique uh, type of teacup, you want to find something that you could fussy cut out. I thought these little seed packets were so cute. They kind of looked like tea packets almost, uh, but I think this is gonna be precious to applique onto one of these. So I'm using these seeds. So look for your scraps, or if you have something in mind um, that's available out there to find something that's fun to, to scrappily, scrappily <laughs> cut out. So I'm gonna use something like that. I love these two little guys here to do something uh, scrappy. This one here was more like monochromatic, which you could totally do something like that. But um, I'm doing something like this because this little guy has a tiny blue speckle in it and I wanted to pick that up. So I'm gonna do something PC with these for this one. And then for this little guy to incorporate the selvage in there, this beautiful yellow fabric has the most adorable selvage from the Floridora collection. So I'm gonna steal that and put it into here, which is gonna be so cute. And then um, this one, I haven't decided. I think I'm probably gonna applique uh, this on to this little beautiful like linen blend. And I'll probably also use it for this cauldron type one if I did uh, whatever I decide to do the embroidery on. So the first one that I wanna start off with is gonna be this one using your selvage, okay? This is the first one we're gonna start with, how to incorporate the selvage into like this main kind of body design so you can make um, this selvage onto any of those four templates. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one, but I'm just gonna kind of show you how I did it. All right, so starting off first with uh, playing with your selvages, when you have fabric that you buy from the store that has a really cute selvage, I kind of like to cut my selvages off as I add fabric to my collection. If it's something that I really love and I'm like, oh, this would be so fun to incorporate into a project, I always cut it off and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So traditionally for this project, we're gonna be sewing this whole thing at a quarter inch seam allowance. So um, I just wanna cut a quarter inch into this fabric so then that way when I'm sewing it in it's going to sew into the yellow and it's just going to show the purple part right so we're just cutting a quarter inch into it so that way when it's pieced in all we see is the purple part right because this fabric had something let's say it was green or something before that but it's hidden in the seam when you are keeping these for your stash maybe it's a good idea I would recommend cutting a half of an inch in so then that way you can trim if you need to but for this particular project since I know what I'm going to be using it for I'm gonna go ahead and cut just a quarter of an inch into it, but for your stash building, I have like a whole pouch of them at home and I always cut a half inch in just so that way I can make any, you know, changes that I need to, or maybe it's a project where I wanna use a bigger seam allowance or so on and so forth, so. Uh, this ruler is great, this Creative Grids ruler. This little first line right here is gonna be a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna align that dashed line to the edge of that purple. That's gonna give me that quarter of an inch, which is my seam allowance, which is perfect. And I'm just gonna slice this off. The other side doesn't have the pretty selvage, so you could discard that side. Or if you wanna use it for something else, you're more than welcome to, but I'm not gonna use that side. I really just want this. We're gonna cut these little fuzzies off as well. Depending on what material, like what selvage is, some brands don't have these little fuzzies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pile these right on top of one another. And I'm just going to, it's not even a specific measurement, just enough to cut the little fuzzies off, which actually this is not like perfect. So I'm gonna do it slowly but surely because the fuzzies, they look like they're about a quarter of an inch. So if I go to sew this in, it's definitely not gonna be secure. So I'm just gonna go in just enough to get rid of the little fuzzy bits. So then when I do go sew it in, it'll be like an accurate true quarter inch the whole time. So there's our selvage, okay? That's what we're gonna be doing for that so you can get ready to incorporate it into whatever uh, template you design. 
Okay, so depending if you are gonna be working with really small scraps, I go over kind of minimums here so you know how much you have to work with if you have like very specific scraps at home. Since I have so much yardage here, I don't have to pay too much attention, but in the pattern I did mention that like, you wanna make sure that at least your pieces are seven inches wide. So especially for your selvage, you wanna make sure that it's at least seven inches long to accommodate, to at least cut out this little template here without having to stress about if you're gonna have enough, but just, you know, just wrote that there so if you're working with really small pieces. But since I have like a whole half a yard here, I don't have to pay too much attention to that, but I am gonna kind of follow along with the instructions that I wrote about uh, how big to cut them. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a piece that is four inches because we're gonna be cutting the two pieces here. So for this bottom piece, you wanna at least have like a four by seven inch piece and then for the top, like another three by seven. So then that way, when you lay down the template, when we cut it, you can make this maybe live more closer to the top or live closer to the bottom. That's totally up for creative judgment as well. Like maybe you want the selvage to be at the bottom of the teacup, or hey, maybe you want it to go this way on the teacup. That is totally up to you, but you just, you have to know how much you have there, how much of a piece you need to have at minimum to be able to successfully cut it out and have it lay the way you want it to. So I'm just gonna cut out a four by seven inch piece right now. And and then, or just four by with my fabric here, because like I said, I'm working with a pretty large piece of fabric, just a half a yard. I think it's time to replace this rotary blade. What do you guys think? All right, so I have my little four by seven here, and, or four by width of my fabric, so four inches here. So I have this little bottom, so I have two four inch scraps, and that's fine. I have plenty of fabric of here, so it's okay. I'm not gonna worry too, too much about it, but what would happen now is I would add this piece to this and this piece to this, okay? So then that way when I go to cut it out, I have enough room to decide how I want this selvage to lay. You just basically are making your own fabric here. Don't worry about this little, yellow part, that part's not gonna be inside at all. So we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew this at a quarter of an inch, all of these three layers together to make one big piece of fabric. And I'm more interested in focusing like on this piece. So I definitely could shift it over a little bit, but it's okay. I definitely wanna focus on that piece there. So you're just going to align it up right on that edge and use a couple pins to secure it until you go over to the sewing machine. And we're gonna be sewing this at a quarter of an inch. The entirety of this project is gonna be sewn at a quarter of an inch. So let's go over some machine settings before we start sewing, because these are really the settings that I'm gonna be using um, from start to finish, essentially. So I'm working on the TL2010, which is a straight stitch only, beautiful beast of a machine. And I'm gonna have my stitch length to be like right under two. My presser foot pressure is gonna be like one line right above that middle dot, uh, just because we're working with pretty light layers here. I'm working with a 9014 needle. Um, it can be a quilting or a top stitch or a universal. And I'm working with Glide 40. Uh, the color that I have set up on my machine right now is Shell. It's a beautiful little color. I have my bobbin all nice and wound, ready to go. Hear that click. And now we're ready to piece what we just pinned together, those layers. And these are really the settings I'm gonna be using for the entirety of this project. So we're just sewing at that quarter of an inch, really trying to follow it as best as we humanly can all the way along the line we just pinned. And there's the little Floradora, which is really cute. I actually even like this Ruby Star Society part. That's really cute too. So now that you have that one layer already pieced on, we're gonna go ahead and grab the second top part. We're gonna put those right sides together so there's the bottom, right sides together. You should be seeing the ugly side of the fabric right with the edge. You can pin this or not pin it however you'd like, and then still using a quarter of an inch. All right, so there you can see how the selvage got perfectly pieced in. This Floridora definitely was printed a lot closer to the bottom, like where the little fluffies were, so you can't really see it too, too much, but I'm still happy with this part where it says Ruby Star Society and little made in Japan with 100% cotton. That's really cute too. So now we're gonna go over to our iron and we're gonna press those seams nice and open. All right, so we have the seams nice and pressed as you can see here. I always like to press my seams open and it looks really, really nice. So now that we have the template, um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab whichever one I wanna use, which I think I'm gonna switch things up and I'm gonna have this one be more of a circle. I think that'll be really, really cute. So since this wants you to press, um, place the fabric on the fold, another way to work around that too is that if 
you wanted to, you could fold a piece of paper in half, and then you could put this on the fold of the paper, trace it out, and then cut it out, and you'll have a full-size template. So just keep that in mind if that's something that you'd like to do to kind of have better placement. That's another way you can take advantage of these little guys and turn it into a full template. So I think for here, I'm liking the Ruby Star Society um, a lot. So I think I'm gonna try to incorporate it that way. So it looks like I'm gonna have to fold this in half around the A and the R, try to make sure they're as nice and straight as possible. And then you just take your little template, place it on the fold. And this is where you can kind of shift it so that stripe can be more at the bottom or it can be more at the top, depending on how much of the pattern you'd like it to show. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of have it be like a little bit more towards the top, like how I did on my first little sample. All right, so I'm just gonna use a friction marker. These are awesome. They're like friction pens that we all know and love, but they're markers, so they mark the fabric so good. And it irons away, which is like the best thing ever. Voila, looking good and grab your favorite pair of fabric scissors. Go ahead and cut that out. It might help to pop a couple pins in this just so it really doesn't shift on you. If you like to cut this with a rotary cutter, by all means, do that as well. And then just trim this guy out. And look at that! Turned out so stinking cute and all that little blue stuff will just iron away. So very, very similar. I've incorporated my selvage more towards the top, but you could have it go diagonal like I mentioned. So one thing to note about these, you guys, is that the assembly across the board on these is really going to be the same. You have to make sure that you cut one of the top and one of the back. So no matter which teacup you are making today, it's going to be the same across the board. You cut one for the front, one for the back, and then we're going to make the strap. Okay, so that's same across the board. As far as interfacing goes, same thing. I'm using, remember, I'm using fusible fleece. So I'm going to cut out one of my fusible fleeces for this, and I'm going to fuse it to the top piece. You can, you know, customize that to your liking as well. So I have this bit left over. Um, maybe I can use it. Oh yeah, maybe we can use this little Ruby Star Society and we'll have the seam going uh, like up and down for the backside. Why not, right? Cute, it says rubystar.com. Perfect. So this will be for the backside. Look at us being useful and not throwing anything away. It's gonna be so fun. Ta-da! So this will be for the back. How cute. So it'll kind of be like reversible. So that's another thing I talked about in the pattern is you can totally make these like reversible and have things be on the front and the back by all means. So this will kind of look just like so, oh, so fun. So now that we have those, let's go ahead and cut our um, fusible fleece really quickly. Just fold this. And if I cut this strategically, maybe I can get another one out. It's okay if it's a little bit smaller. Remember when you cut it a little bit smaller, it works really nice because then that way it kind of reduces the bulk, but this project is so small that you don't have to worry about it too, too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and trace this out. Just my one layer. This is why I like the markers too, because it's so nice on fusible fleece. It's nice on fabric too, but on fusible fleece, since it's like fluffy, it can be kind of a pain to mark up fusible fleece when you need it. So the markers are great for that. Ta-da! I have my one layer of fusible fleece cut out. So whichever is your top piece, this one's gonna be my top. I'm gonna fuse it onto this. Find the wrong side of your fusible fleece where it has the little bumpies. The bumpies are gonna go on the wrong side, that's the glue, and that's what's gonna get fused to this. So let's give that a nice little iron and get that fused in. This is gonna be such a nice project for two kinds of people. The people who are just starting out, who are beginners, and you know just wanna make something and have a finished product by the end of it, totally beginner friendly. You can just do one fabric here, just so you kind of understand how sewing works, or you can get more creative. This is perfect for the people who wanna play with piecing, who wanna uh, play with free motion quilting, play with embroidery. I mean, this is gonna be perfect for everybody. So everything is nice and fused on. You can quilt this at this point if you wanted to. Like if you wanted to go in and do some stitching, you're more than welcome to here. So that's another reason why I really like working with fusible fleece. So these little steps that I'm showing you here are really the same across the board. Have one cut of the template for the front and the back. We're gonna make the strap now. Um, and then I'll show you guys how to turn a selvage into a strap. But let's go ahead and get this one complete so we understand how assembly works so it's the same across the board. Okay, so for your strap, your strap is gonna be 
one and a half by six and a half inches long. And that's stated in the cutting chart for you guys. So that's nice, no matter how you're doing it. Okay, so I still have this scrap left over. So I'm gonna use this and it'll all kind of be the same and just melt in. You can do this as a contrast or really whatever's calling your name here. Um, but I'm just going to use a little scrappy that I have left over because I don't like having waste. I always like to kind of make sure I can use as much possible as the, of the fabric that I have. Like, and then this one I'm gonna trim down to be six and a half. And then we're gonna take this little piece and we're going to fold it right sides together like so, and then we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and just sew that at a quarter of an inch and then use a tube turner or whatever method you like to do to turn it out. I can't live without a tube turner. It would, I, any other way just makes me go crazy. So I'm gonna do it that way and then pull it out, give it an iron and that will create the little strap. All right, so we're just gonna press that, get all the wrinkles and crinkles out, get that strap nice and ready. And just like that, you have a strap and you have two raw edges. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to place it onto your little uh, teacups. So then that way we can finish it and work on the next technique. So grab your front teacup piece and there's instructions on this as well in the pattern of me showing you like the wrong way and the right way of doing this too. Uh, so we're gonna take the strap and then create a U shape. That's how I know it's not gonna get like twisted or anything and it's gonna be in the right place when it gets flipped out like that. So you're gonna grab it, turn it to make a U, and it should kind of look something like that. That's my best advice to give you no matter if you're doing straps on a bag or whatever the case may be. So the most important thing to remember here is that since we are using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, when you're placing these straps, there's not really a wrong way or a right way of doing this. The only thing you wanna keep in mind is that you don't wanna put it all the way up here because it'll catch. So make sure you're at least like a half of an inch down from the top. So then that way it doesn't catch. So I'm gonna put mine like right here, right above this selvage, and then this other one right here. The beautiful thing about this is that you can use clips or pins to kind of like hold them in place and then turn them out and see if you kind of like where they are finished. So just find that kind of sweet spot and just clip those, keeping this one right above the selvage and this one is just a little bit more down. And then when you turn it out, Bada bing, bada boom, it looks really good. So once you have your straps, make sure they're in, not out, because when you sew this, then there won't be any straps. So it's gotta make sure it's tucking in. Then you're gonna grab your backing piece and you're gonna place the backing piece right on top of all three said layers. And then I unclip and then reclip. Make sure everything is like properly on top. And at this point I'll clip a little bit more just to really make sure the fabric stays together. All right, and then we're gonna leave a birthing spot and you can leave that towards the top. Definitely better to do it towards the top versus the bottom. So the bottom is obviously curved, so it'll be harder to tuck in. So again, making sure you go at least a half inch. I would do more. I don't, I don't ever like getting that close to like where you go around. So I'm gonna go like right here to like right here. That's plenty to turn this little guy out. It's a really small project. So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine, sew at a quarter of an inch all the way around, turn it right side out, clip those corners and press. And this process will really apply to all of the techniques. So I'm starting at my start little marker and making sure to back tack because that's a high stress area. So all the way around. And the key here is to really take your time with you know the curves of this project because the more accurate you get on these curves the better defined teacup shape you're going to have especially on the more curved shapes on the more um you know square shapes they're okay they're much more forgiving but with these circle ones you definitely want to make sure that you are taking your time and really stopping and adjusting to make sure you define the outline and then when i get close to my little blue line I'm gonna back tack stitch. And voila, we're gonna clip these corners to help with the bulk and then we're gonna turn it right side out. So grab your favorite pair of fabric scissors again and we're gonna clip these corners. And what I mean by clip them is I like to always sew off and then sew again because it makes this little quarter inch square. And I clip from the bottom right hand to the top left hand at a diagonal like that. So it really helps reduce any bulk. You can feel free to clip these too if you kind of want to like release a little bit of tension so you have a better curved shape. I'm just creating little slits that are about like an eighth of an inch. So then you're just going to go through the little hole 
and turn your project right side out. This is why it's really important to back tack stitch here because it's pushing all that fabric through that little tiny full. You can grab a point turner to definitely poke out those corners. So, so far we have the cutest little teacup. It's so fun. I love that it's kind of like reversible. I wasn't even planning on doing that for this one, but it just turned out so good like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and push all out the little corners and then giving it a press is really gonna kind of secure the shape. So make sure you're happy with the shape before you press. You could press the straps too, so they have a little bit more defined shape like that. So I have that little hole tucked in. You can feel free to put a couple clips this to just kind of hold it in. And then all I'm gonna do is my final little top stitch that I did all the way around with this. So just a little top stitch at the eighth of an inch. It's gonna really secure this project in place and kind of define the shape of the teacup. So let's take this over and sew all the way around. And this one is so fun. Wow, I love this one. So cute. Okay, so since this part is a top stitch, we wanna make the stitch like just a little bit longer, like three, three and a half, just so then that way it's a little bit more defined. Pick a little spot to start. And we're just doing an eighth of an inch here. I love this top stitch, this final top stitch. This is like my favorite part. All right, and then when you approach where you started, go ahead and do a little back tack stitch to secure those stitches. And voila, look how cute. First one done. Well, now let's do our next one. The next kind of technique I'm gonna be showing you guys is how to do something fun with piecing. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to turn the selvage into a strap. So for this one, I actually did end up using some leftover 10 by 10 inch squares, which worked perfectly. So just so you guys know, that is definitely a possibility. But for this one, I'm gonna use some of this blue and that yellow that I talked about in the beginning of this video. So I'm gonna start off with that. And for this one, I'm gonna use this template, which is this shape the one that I originally used for the selvage. So this part has so much creative freedom here. If you have leftover like two and a half by two and a half inch squares, this would also be a great opportunity um, to play with those as well. I just have a fat quarter here. Um, I'm gonna give my fabric pieces a good little iron here, but you can really cut your, um, your scraps here to be whatever shape possible. You can even do like some more intricate piecing if you wanted to. Uh, the piecing part is fun. You just wanna make sure, obviously the goal here is for whatever you're piecing to get it to fit inside that template shape. So that's like the biggest word of advice that I can give you is whatever piecing you're doing, obviously make sure one, that the print is not super, super large. So for this like monochromatic look, uh, however small your piecing is gonna be, you wanna make sure you can actually see the print. So a big, big print might not be practical there. Um, and again, just to catch whatever you're piecing inside. So use a smaller print. Don't do super big piecing because you wanna catch it in, you know, however creative you want. I just did kind of like a simple elongated checkered kind of print. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I did with that. All you need to do from here is I cut five one and a half by 10 and a half inch pieces. I'm gonna start off with this one and I'm gonna make sure that I start off with a clean edge first. So go ahead and cut five one and a half by 10 inch strips or with the fabric, whatever. Cut those first and then we're gonna talk about piecing them together. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow. So there you go. You got your five and your five. You can do it monochromatic. You can do it kind of complementary colors, whatever floats your boat. So the next step is going to be joining them all together. So obviously alternating colors, something like this. My fabric is wider than the 10 inches, but that's okay. That's kind of just like your minimum. So you know what to be working with. Having it be larger is okay too. Take all of your pieces here um, and start pinning them together however you'd like or don't pin. And we're just gonna go and piece this all together until we have one big piece. Remember to um, move down your stitch length to a piecing stitch length if you had to change it for any reason, like if you were making one at a time. So make sure to keep that in mind because we wanna make sure we have a piecing stitch length, not a top stitch length. So now begins the steady process of piecing all of these strips together. And I would highly encourage as you piece to press all your seams nice and open. So we have a good place to work with, a nice flat area to work with. So once you have everything put together, you have a really fun striped giant piece of fabric and we're gonna press all those seams open and then start uh, cutting and piecing and cutting again. And before you know it, you'll have a beautiful piece teacup.
Okay, so you should have a beautiful new piece of fabric and all my seams are nice and pressed, ready to rock and roll. Um, if you're following the instructions that I give you, it tells you more specifically um, to cut it like exactly in half. Uh, but I know I have plenty of fabric here for to cut out the template. So I'm just gonna roughly cut it in half. Uh, so I kind of know what I'm working with here, like so. And now what you're gonna do is you have your two pieces and you're going to shift it like this. That is what's gonna get cut out out of the template to give it that kind of piece look. You see there? So the goal here is to cut it in half, shift it, and you're gonna wanna make sure you align things up accordingly. And this is where you're gonna wanna use pins and you're gonna wanna use my technique of poking through the seam front and back. And then that really makes sure things are in the right place. I'm gonna do two at one time because these pins are extra long. And then what I like to do, oh, little Archie vocals there. <laughs> so here you can see that it really lines up perfectly. This is like such a bulletproof method for me. I love piecing like this. It never fails. I always get my points to be really, really nice and matched up. And then since these pins are really long, I'm gonna do kind of like two in one here. And I just want to make sure everything is nice and aligned and it's looking really good so far. So we're just going to keep doing that until you have everything nice and pinned in place. And then you're going to go over to the sewing machine and you're going to give that a nice little sew out. All right, so piecing stitch length, joining that all together and taking it nice and slow to make sure you do not run over any pins. I'm always interested. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you somebody who sews over your pins <laughs> and pray to God that it doesn't hit anything? Or are you super like no anti sewing over pins? Like, no, 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 it's a big no-no. It's a big no-no in my books. Um, I, I've seen people say like they have machines that like have a detector um, about when they run over a pin. And I just don't think that's true. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Like how does the machine know if it's a pin or if it's like hardware, you know, because it's hard. These are things that like get run over and they can throw your machine out of timing. So it's not worth the gamble for me. All right, so my seam is nice and pressed. So I have a nice ready piece to start cutting out the template. This one's kind of nice um, as far as placing it on the fold because you can fold it right on the seam and then place it in like so. Uh, my advice for this one is to try to kind of get it where it's not like right on a seam So it kind of goes halfway on both. So you see how I'm like not putting it on top of the seam It's kind of an awkward place to cut So the goal is to try to get it kind of on the same piece there So it's not um, kind of weird to cut on and the seams don't come undone Take my little template doesn't matter which way you put it because there it's a mirrored image of itself and then I'm just gonna try to make sure that I have it kind of like in those colors on the top and the bottom so I'm not on the seam. And I'm gonna trace this out like so. And then I'm gonna actually clip it because it's a little bulky right here. So I'm gonna cut that. And ta-da! Magic. Oh my gosh, how cute. So fun. So, so fun. I'm actually going to cut a different piece of fabric for the backing. Remember, the piecing is the exact same. You want to have, or I mean, the construction, should I say. You have one for the top, one for the back. If you wanted to cut another piece of this for the back, you absolutely could. I think I'm going to save this piece backing for another one that I do uh, coming up. The next one's going to be that free motion quilting kind of applique styled one. So I think what I'm gonna do for this one is I think maybe I'll just do one of these seeds as the background. I think the backing of this little teacup. I think that'll be kind of cute. Go ahead and cut one template out of the backing for this and then your fusible fleece and the process really begins the same and then I'm, we're gonna make the strap out of some selvage. Which actually, how perfect is this selvage down here? So I'm gonna use this selvage for the strap. This selvage is literally perfect for the strap there. So I think that one's gonna be actually my favorite uh, that we've done so far. That one's absolutely gorgeous. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just roughly cut this off with a pair of scissors about like an inch in, cause it's gonna be easier to handle this piece here. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and decide what part of the selvage I want to be for it because I know that for the strap, the strap has to be six and a half inches long. This ruler is perfect. This is the one and a half by six and a half, so it'll kind of help me gauge uh, getting in the little flower land. So what I'm gonna do now is since this is six and a half, I'll just perfectly trim it. Delicious, there we go. So then you know the strap has to be one and a half. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is just cut off these fuzzies because again, those fuzzies don't count. They're not secure enough to be a part of the actual seam allowance. They're just too, too fuzzy. So now we're gonna trim this to be one and a half, which this ruler is absolutely perfect for that. And it is gonna catch and we're gonna put it right sides together and sew it just like we did to the other one and then turn it right side out, press it and get everything in position. All right, so look at that. How perfect is that little strap? It's gonna be delicious. So we're gonna turn our front piece wrong side up, take our fusible fleece with the grippies, put the little grippy side down, soft side should be facing you. So that's the glue that's gonna adhere to this little guy. So we're just gonna go ahead and fuse that on. And for this one, I actually did do some quilting and I think that really brought this to life. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this one as well. Remember how I said on the other piece, you could do that quilting. You totally and absolutely can, and that's what we're gonna do. So before we start finally uh, doing that final assemble to turn it right side out, we're just going to do that light quilting on our machine, but we gotta make sure this fusible fleece is fused on and then I'll meet you guys at the sewing machine. What I did here is I just used a quarter of an inch foot and I just followed um, like the seam and did a quarter of an inch. And then from there, I just kept doing a quarter of an inch from each little stitch out. So uh, basically just straight line quilting at a quarter of an inch the whole time. That's all I did. So let's take this to the sewing machine. So now since we're doing our quilting, you wanna bring up that stitch length to about three and a half now. And here's our little piece, nice and stabilized. It has a great feel to it. The reason I love using this um, type of fusible fleece for quilting little projects like this, I do this even in like table runners and small things, just because it allows me to not have to quilt something with the back piece since this is already fused on and I don't have to bind it. I just put it right sides together and I'm ready to rock and roll. So stitch length three and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my first stitch out following this seam. At a quarter of an inch, I have my hinged quarter inch foot on this machine right now. Just doing that first stitch, just like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just follow that line. Or actually, I might just follow this middle seam right here. And that way, so I don't have to do such dense quilting. But again, this area, this part of this project is completely up for your own creative inspiration. So the left and the right of this foot are a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna follow the next seam. So with the left side of the foot to give me that quarter inch. And then follow the next seam. You could even free motion quilt this part, you guys. You don't have to do straight line quilting here or you don't even have to quilt it at all. I just feel like the quilting really brought this piecing section of the project to life. So I really liked that look. And then I'm gonna do one more right here following this seam. I'm trying to avoid doing any um, stitching too, too close to the top, like up here. Like I didn't wanna do another one there or even another one here because the seam allowance is probably not even gonna allow that to catch in there. So now that we have it quilted, whenever you've quilted it to your liking, then you can start doing that final assembly of putting the strap in and sewing it around. So here we have it, how adorable. Same concept, same technique here. Quilted, just a different template. I'm gonna grab my strap and I want the Ooh, that's kind of a hard one. Do I want it to be like this? Do I want it to be like this? What if it's flower land? That's hard, you guys. That's a hard choice. I kind of like how the flower land looks on this side, so then it's really like reversible. So we're gonna put this side. So I'm gonna grab my strap, curve it, set it into position, make sure I'm at least half of an inch away from the bottom and the top, especially for the more linear shapes. And I'm gonna pop two clips here just to be able to turn them and kind of see if the shape is good. Oh no, I gotta do it the other way. You see what I just did? <laughs> the pretty side down, the side that you want to see down. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard in sewing because everything is done backwards so it's kind of like your mind has to think in reverse. There we go, that's the side of the, the strap that I want to see. So once I have that in place, then I'll take my backing 
put that right on top, unclip and reclip. And then just make sure you leave yourself a birthing area. On this one, it's kind of nice just because um, it's all flat, but with this one, since it's pieced, we're gonna try to do it on the side that has the least piecing, which is this top portion right here. So it's gonna be a lot easier to tuck that seam in if you do it that way. So I'm gonna leave myself my birthing section right here to try to avoid this seam. And we're just gonna sew all the way around. All right, so pieced all the way around, making sure that you back tack stitched. And again, used a piecing stitch length, not a top stitch length. I'm gonna clip all four corners on this one since it's not curved at all, like that. And then we're just gonna birth it right side out. I'm very notorious for leaving a very small birthing hole. <laughs> I, that's a common trend with me. I always, I'm like, that's good enough. Like even with bags, oh my gosh. This one's at least a little bit more forgiving because it's a small project. All right, pop those corners out so they're nice and defined. You see that? That's a huge difference. Get that going. Oh, look how adorable that is, you guys. Oh my gosh, this flower land on this side. That's just, oh, I love it, I love it. Once you get it going, you're gonna tuck in this part to be cohesive with the rest. And once that's good and you're happy, go ahead and do your little tuck in to be nice and flush, pop a clip. And then once you're happy with it, go to your sewing machine and just do a little top stitch all the way around. And ta-da, she is all done. I love that the flower land pokes through like that. That's so cute. It really does look like it could be reversible, whichever side I want it to do, to look like. It looks stunning. So, so far we have done our selvage play here which is so perfect and then we did some piecing also incorporating the selvage into the handles so these two techniques are checked off the list now all that's left is i think might be my favorite one is the free motion quilting one i love fussy cutting projects um, and doing like applique so this part doesn't have to be free motion quilted it could be simply applique if you wanted it to be but um, i'm going to do some free motion because i need to get better at my free motion quilting so i will definitely uh, be attempting to do some here but i think i did pretty good on here what do you think i got some pebbling going on my stitches are a little tight but you get the gist so let's prepare this one Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna be actually using this more kind of like tapered uh, cup outline. So this template, okay? And I'm gonna be using my cotton linen blend for the background, and then I'm gonna fussy cut one of these seed packets on the top that I'm gonna free motion quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by cutting out one of these. That's gonna be the base, so the background, okay? And then I'm gonna cut the backing while I'm at it. And the backing, I'm actually gonna use what was left over of this pieced uh, little section from the last coaster that we just did. So I'm gonna use that for the backing and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do with the strap. <laughs> and then I'm gonna start telling you guys how to use that seam a seam to start fussy cutting out one of these seed packets. So I've decided, uh, I already have the linen cut out. So I've decided I'm gonna use this one cause I feel like the contrast is gonna look really, really pretty on that linen and that orange. So I'm gonna begin to fussy cut out this piece and I'm gonna make sure that I at least give myself about half of an inch all the way around um, for stabilizing it. So there's the seed packet I wanna put onto this pouch. And then we're going to grab our Steam Seam 2. This stuff is amazing. If you're somebody who does applique, you'll really thoroughly enjoy this. So I'm just gonna roughly um, draw out kind of like what I need to cut out. It doesn't have to be exact. It could be even a little bit less, but you just wanna make sure you at least cover the area that you need. So just place it on top and trace it out. There's not really a huge rhyme or reason here of how you cut this one out. Here's my piece. And then you're gonna want to peel this open just like that. And then one side is gonna be sticky. And then the other side is the grid side. The sticky side is gonna go down on the wrong side of the design that you're gonna cut out, all right? And then you're going to iron this so the glue adheres to this side of the fabric. Doesn't really need a super long press, but it does need to be fused on really good so that way it peels off a lot more naturally. 
give that a second to cool down. And then once that's cooled down, you can begin to cut out the actual seed packet with your favorite pair of scissors. This is a really uh, great project to use when you're doing applique. It's really nice to use those little Karen K. Buckley scissors because they're serrated. Those are fabulous. We all love them so much, so they kind of grow legs and move around, but I'll just use these scissors for now, although those do make a huge difference. I don't want any of the blue in. I just want to cut exactly into the white. So I'm going to try my very, very best to do that, but it's going to be a little hard. I can go back and trim it up too. And actually what I'm going to do, um, actually I can go in with a little rotary cutter to get that a little bit more precisely cut. Just like that, perfect. Nice and pretty. Look how gorgeous that's gonna contrast on that. It's gonna look so, so good. So once you have that all cut out, we're going to peel it off, the other backing to this. And if it's glued off properly, the fabric itself should be sticky to the touch. And then this piece shouldn't have anything on it. It should just be that grid left. And this should be nice and sticky. And I'm gonna position it onto my cup looks so cute. I think I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. The reason I love the Steam Seam too light is it's nice for like multiple layers of applique. So if you're somebody who likes to collage quilt, which I would love to do a class on that, let me know in the comments down below if you would love to do a collage quilt with me. Um, but I just stick this down. So I kind of want it to be a little bit lower. And so you can just reposition it as much as you'd like, just keeping in mind that you wanna make sure that it's at least a quarter of an inch away from the edges. I think what I might even do to make this, give it more of a look like of a tea bag is I might just round these corners a little bit. Just getting creative. There we go. So it kinda looks a little bit more like a bag of tea. And then when I quilt it, free motion quilt it, I will like go around it and do some fun stuff. I'll bring you along with me as I free motion quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my fusible fleece now. I'm gonna cut out whatever I wanna use for the backing and I'm gonna cut out whatever I wanna use for the strap. So get all the components ready so when we free motion quilt, we can assemble it all together. All right, so we have the backing cut, we have the strap, which I had just enough from the leftover selvage, which is so cute because uh, Melody Miller is the designer of this. So it's really cute. And then I have my fusible fleece. So we're gonna go ahead and fuse that on and that's also gonna lock the position of this now. I mean, it's already sticking on because that's the backside was sticky, but ironing it will secure it in place. So that's what we want. And I always like to fuse it on from the fabric side just because I feel like the glue melts better onto this. So just give this a good press until it's ready to go. And then if there is any leftover overhang, you can iron that off, but this is like really minimal, so it should be good. And then once this part is ready to go, you're going to free motion quilt this part, which is gonna be so fun. For the free motion quilting, I am gonna be using a front open toe foot. So let me just show you what that looks like so we can all be on the same page. This is the foot that I'm gonna be using. It is a front open toe free motion quilting foot for the TLs. It's gonna give me a nice clear view of exactly what I'm quilting. And I'm probably gonna free motion this in a white because I want the white to show. I'm gonna do like a heavy little stitch out for the string, quote unquote, since I'm trying to make it look more like a little bag of tea. So once you have this ready to go, let's go ahead and take this to the machine and start free motion quilting it. All right, so as we're setting up our machine for free motion quilting, um, I have the foot already installed. We're gonna go ahead and drop the feed dogs. We're gonna reduce our speed to about 30 to 40%. So kind of like, just a hair under the bottom line and the top line. So like somewhere in between there, cause so you wanna have a consistent speed set up um, and you're gonna make sure your stitch length is zero. There is no stitch length in free motion quilting. Um, you are the stitch length. And your presser foot pressure, instead of it being in the middle, it needs to be all the way to the top, um, at the very top notch, just like so. Now you're ready for free motion quilting. I'm gonna first begin by putting my presser foot down and doing a single stitch to bring up my bottom thread because you wanna make sure you bring up the thread. And we're gonna tuck both of those underneath and put the, the foot back down. I like to do a couple stitches just to kind of like secure it. And then you can move those to the back. And then once you have that speed set, it's pedal to the metal from here. So I'm gonna start by going all the way around first. And I'm gonna try to go at a consistent speed as best as I can. <laughs> and don't be afraid to stop. Like if you need to stop so you don't get into an awkward place, definitely do so. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on creating that little string to 
kind of look like a bag of tea. So I'm just gonna do that like a good amount. Kind of tucked it in a little bit there, but I think we kind of get the gist there. It's kind of made it look like it was falling out of it. Now I'm gonna do some fun, kind of just do some echoing around the flower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start in the middle again. And this is a judge-free zone, y'all, because this is not my calling. This is Gigi's calling. If she was here right now, she would free motion this for me and it would be absolutely exceptional. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do the inside of the flower a little bit. Um, just kind of do whatever comes to me in this moment. I don't have anything pre-planned. Um, I'm just getting artsy fartsy here. So maybe I'll do like a little, just to give it some texture. And then I'm actually gonna lift up my foot and I'm gonna go ahead and trim these. Okay, so I just gave my flower a little bit of texture. Now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start echoing some of these petals just to give it some more texture. You can go exactly with the flowers or you can just kind of go under them. Whatever makes you happy here. And I think that's good. Maybe I'll make my way around here to um, maybe give some detail to the leaf. Nothing crazy, but just a little bit of texture here. Just echoing the actual design of the flower. All right, so let's see how that looks. I think I'm content with that. <laughs> I'm not a free motion quilting expert by any means, but I think that's okay. <laughs> we did an okay job. With lots of practice, it'll, this will get better and better, but I'm content with the turnout. <laughs> It always could be better, but don't be too hard on yourself. I think from afar, <laughs> it's it's good. I was really proud of this free motion quilting, but that's okay. It just takes practice. I already made my little strap, again, out of some selvage because this just worked out so perfectly. I had just enough. And then now we're gonna start layering it. So I'm gonna grab my strap and I want this strap to be the one that shows like this side. So I'm gonna grab it, turn it, start to position it and then just kind of turn it out and see if that's good, which I'm happy with that. And then we're gonna take our backing, which is some leftovers from the pieced one, and I'm gonna unclip and clip, unclip and clip, clip around, and I'm gonna leave myself my birthing area up here, and I'll be right back after I just go sew this around at a quarter of an inch. Okie dokie, so let's go ahead and trim those corners down, all four here. And you can clip a little bit here if you want to, especially on these, just these little curved parts, just to release some of that tension. And then it's time to bring it to life. Ta-da! Aw, it's looking so good. I'm so happy with how these turned out, you guys. These are so fun. I just wanna like keep making them and keep making them because as I make them, all my ideas keep coming through and I'm like, oh, I could do this, I could do this. There we go. I think that turned out really good. <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to see with uh, the background being so dark, but give it a little press. And then the goal here is to tuck this in to be cohesive with the rest. And then go ahead and top stitch this all the way around, just like you did with your other ones. And then I'll meet you with a finished little teacup. And voila, here she is. It turned out so, so cute. I love these. So let's kind of see what we got going on here. Let's see them all together because it's like just so cute. Look at those. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are so adorable. I love the fussy cut ones. These have, this has to be my favorite for sure. Um, so these are so, so fun. The last one that we have to go over together is the coffee cup one, or I'm sorry, the coffee cup one. They're all coffee cups, Bokey. Uh, the little, opportunity of embroidery. And I'll give you guys some tips. I'm not gonna embroider one here today, but I'm gonna give you lots of tips and tricks and guide you on watching Shannon's videos as she is teaching you guys how to embroider. So this was our piecing one. This is our selvage one. We actually ended up using selvage in all these projects, which is spectacular. So I'm loving these. 
they're all almost like reversible too. Look at that. Oh my gosh, these are so, these are, these are adorable. I love them. So let's talk about uh, if you wanna go the route of embroidery. So what I would recommend for the embroidery project is that you pick out the template that you want and I would actually go ahead and create a full sized template of this. So again, take that paper, fold it on the fold of the paper, trace it out, and then you'll have a complete um, one or you can print out two of these and stick them side by side, however you want. Um, but I would make a full size. Then what I would do is I would get a scrap of fabric enough for you to be able to hoop it in your embroidery machine. And I would trace out, so for example, let's say I wanted to embroider on this. I would trace out the complete template so I know kind of like what's my space looking like. I'm just gonna rough ball this just so you guys have a visual, a visual to follow as I'm talking. So let's say I take this, and this is my rough idea of how much space I have to work with, right? So whatever I embroider on here has to fit in this space, also accommodating at least a quarter inch all the way around, so then that way it actually gets captured into the design. So this would be a great place to put a monogram, a quote, uh, a name, just something cute, maybe even an inside joke that you have with somebody. I don't know, whatever makes you happy. Embroidery is like a whole nother creative world that you could play with. Um, so you would wanna embroider that onto this solid piece of fabric first. Once this is all said and done, then you would take your template and cut it out because with embroidery, it shrinks. So you don't wanna you know, cut out this piece and then embroider it because it will shrink and it'll deform because that's what embroidery does. Um, so after this is all done, you would press it out, make sure everything's nice and smooth, and then you would cut out and follow the instructions as normal. You can do whatever you want really from there. So. With embroidery, that's a whole nother world of, of possibilities, but if you haven't subscribed to our Janome Junkies YouTube channel, we are Juki Junkies as well as Janome Junkies. We're an authorized dealer for both sewing machine brands. So I would highly suggest that you guys subscribe to both channels because Shannon has been doing um, new segments where she teaches you guys about machine embroidery. So if you have an embroidery machine at home and you're scared to use it, or you're in the market for a new embroidery machine, that would be a great place for you guys to go and watch with her. Maybe I'll challenge Ms. Shannon to uh, make one of these and see what she would put it on hers. <laughs> so that'd be really fun. All right, you guys, and just like that, we have some adorable little coasters. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and really sparked some creativity in your sewing. It's such a fun and easy project with unlimited possibilities. Like I said in the video, my mind just kept going and going and going. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you try something new. I hope you challenge yourself. I hope you make tons of these and gift them. I think these are really sweet. I'm almost even contemplating making them and like selling some because these are just so cute. Like I would love these. If someone gifted me these, I'd be like, you are so kind. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Comment down below what your favorite thing was about this video or what you want to learn next. Or I think I asked halfway through the video if you guys wanted to do a collage quilt with me. I love collage quilts. I would love to teach you guys that. So uh, give me your feedback. I love hearing from you guys and seeing your comments. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me. Give us a call at 813-661-9000 and we will help you out as well. Or just comment down below. So like and subscribe, share this with a friend. Um, and I hope to see you soon on our next Make It Monday. And when you make your little cutie patooties, make sure you share them on your social media platforms and you tag us on Instagram, Gigi's Fabric Shop and Juki Junkies and Facebook. And we just wanna see what you guys are making because I live through you guys when I see you guys making these because I'm like, oh my gosh, people are actually making them. It's so rewarding when I see you guys make the patterns that I write because it's like a full circle for me. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.